specially built miniature planes see important duty at the anti-aircraft artillery training center. The little wing jobs are radio controlled and once in the skies are the closest thing to a real target. You'll see later how they can duplicate most any maneuver of a full-sized ship. Trucks housing the radio equipment also cart the midget aircraft to the range, where catapults launch them for flight over the mock battle area at Fort Bliss. Care is exercised in moving the radio target plane into launching position. Not this type of catapult is most familiar aboard battleships and cruisers, where it provides the initial burst of speed in takeoff with limited space. Cranking of the windlass winds the plane into position, providing the proper amount of tension for rapid discharge from the catapult. A final check to make sure the plane is secure, and then the officer assembles the radio plane control box. First the socket, which connects the ground antenna with the control box. From here on, the only operating mechanisms employed are a simple appearing stick and a parachute release button. The stick guides rudder movements. Every maneuver of the ship contingent on the remote control radio apparatus. The same goes for the opening of the parachute hatch and the release of the silk canopy, which will guide the tiny target plane safely to the ground after it has been hit. Folding and packing of the special chutes so they won't foul are important jobs when you realize that the little planes are costly and well worth saving. Finally, with the parachute secure to its coverboard, it is placed into position in the miniature cockpit. Back to the field and ready for the first takeoff. Every precaution taken just as though it were a huge flying fortress. He checks the RPM of the propellers. Ship OK, so the target control officer signals for its release from the catapult. Then the radio control box sees action, guiding the aerial Lilliputian to its rising and leveling off every bank and dive at approximately 35 miles per hour. The idea, of course, is for the plane finally to assume an altitude where it presents the target the same relative size as a real plane. And the little striped job will soon be within range of the gun, ready to take it. Up and down the firing line. Preparation for action. They use the M5 direction. They track the target with care. Not one, but several crews of gunners receiving training through use of a single little radio-controlled target plane. This is as important training for the men of the anti-aircraft artillery training center as the firing itself. Eyes must be keen and alert. Coordination must be perfect. The range flag is broken out. Live cartridges inserted. The target control officer guides the plane into line of the guns, and we're set. Commence firing! Pull the little ship. Keep firing! Now the release by radio of the parachute and the uneventful floating to the ground of the stricken target plane. You can see how important it was to make sure the chute was packed just right. They pull in the parachute and speed is essential for the idea is to get the plane back into service so there'll be no tie-up in training operations at the range. Only the more serious repairs have to be made at the shop, where skilled mechanics get to work. 
Perhaps in peacetime, they tinkered with miniature planes as a hobby. Today, it's an important wartime job. All parts of these planes are interchangeable. Spare parts are kept in stock. Meanwhile, another plane is taking off for a brief preliminary run while the gunners sight the target. Drama that smacks of honest-to-goodness action. I hit. So bail her out by radio and parachute. No sooner is one bullet riddled miniature down than there's still another snapped aloft to take her place. expert marksman, thanks greatly to an ingenious little piece of radio-controlled aircraft. It's realistic training, preparing them for the days when they'll have to take sight on a Zero or a Messerschmitt. And they'll be ready, raring to man the big anti-aircraft guns all along the vast global front, grimly remembering that where it was once only a target plane, it quickly becomes the real thing. So let them have it, men.